Today, we're going to be talking about a class of medications called sulfonylureas, which are used to treat and manage type 2 diabetes. Stay tuned to learn more. What's up guys? Hope everyone's been doing well. For those of you who don't know, my name is Edgman and I'm a pharmacist. And I enjoy making these videos about common questions patients have about medications or any healthcare related topic. So make sure to subscribe for more content. Now to the rest of the video. Type 2 diabetes is a very, very common condition in which many patients have. And it's basically a, an insulin insensitivity. So your body is not as sensitive to the insulin that you're making, which causes high blood sugars. And this is due to mainly uh, poor lifestyle decisions, such as not eating a healthy diet, not working out, and also has a genetic disposition. So certain patient groups or certain pa patient populations have a higher chance of developing type 2 diabetes, but it's mainly due to lifestyle. So if you're eating unhealthy, if you're not exercising, not managing your um, health, um, type 2 diabetes is a very common condition that many patients develop. And so you do have common symptom of having high blood sugar. And so sulfonylureas are a type of medication or a class of medication that helps lower that blood sugar to manage those uh, patients who have high blood sugar. And the way that sulfonylureas work in lowering the blood sugar is they bind to receptors on your pancreas and it forces the pancreas to secrete out more insulin. And we know that insulin helps lower the blood sugar. Now, in my opinion, sulfonylureas are not the best medication to help manage type 2 diabetes because when they bind to the pancreas and basically force the pancreas to secrete out insulin, it's kind of overworking the pancreas, which over time, because you use medication um, daily, over time it causes the pancreas to kind of wear out, which further um, complicates the diabetes. You might turn into a type 1 diabetic because if the pancreas completely gives out, then you're not producing any insulin. And that's what basically type 1 diabetes is in a nutshell. So uh, sulfonylureas are a very common medication because it's very inexpensive and it's very old. But in my opinion, there's other medications that are out that help manage type 2 diabetes better without causing that overworking of that pancreas. But just to sum it up, it, that's how it's used to help manage your blood sugar by forcing the pancreas to secrete out more insulin. These are the three most common sulfonylureas that are typically pre prescribed. So the first one, and this is the most common one, is glipizide. This one's five milligrams, but it comes in different doses. Let me show you guys the tablet. Okay, so that's glipizide. The next one is glimepiride. This one's four milligrams. This one also comes in different doses. They all do. They all come in a couple of variations of the dose. But let me show you guys the tablet here. So that's glimepiride. And the next one is gliburide, five milligrams. Now, if you're asking me which one of these are better um, versus the other, there's not too much difference that's clinically really irrelevant. Um, patients just typically get either one of these. This one's mostly prescribed, and I don't really know exactly why it's most prescribed, but um, these are typically the most common ones. There's, and these are technically second generation. There's a first generation version of sulfonylureas, but those are never prescribed. Like I've never even seen them at a pharmacy or given to a patient. These are the most common ones. Now let's go over some key points about these medications. Key point number one is you want to make sure you take these medications 30 minutes before eating or at the very latest with food. Because if you guys remember the way this medication works by causing the pancreas to secrete out insulin to lower the blood sugar, if you have no food in you, if you haven't, if you haven't eaten anything, your blood sugar is relatively low for what it, compared to what it, when it is whenever you eat. Because when you eat, you have a big spike in your blood sugar. So if you haven't eaten and you take this medication and it forces the insulin to be secreted, your already like baseline uh, blood glucose level might fall even lower, which might cause hypoglycemia, which is known as low blood sugar. And it's had, this is a relatively dangerous state to be in because um, you have shakiness, you have heart palpitations, uh, causes dizziness, and you want to avoid hypoglycemia. So it's very important to tell your patients or to tell, I tell my patients to take this medication 30 minutes before eating or at the very least with food because you don't want to have low blood sugar. Second key point, and this is piggybacking off the first key point, 
is that if you skip a meal, you should also skip the dose. Because typically these medications are prescribed, let's say three times a day with food, and a doctor writes it because he or she thinks that you're gonna, the patient's gonna take it with breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So let's say you skip lunch, you should also skip the dose, even if the doctor wrote it for three times a day, you should have it twice a day if you only have two meals. Third key point, which is an unfortunate one, is that these medications cause weight gain. And this is another reason why I don't like this class of medications because typically for a type two diabetic, they wanna improve their lifestyle by eating a healthier diet, exercising more. And these medications are supposed to help manage their diabetes, but it unfortunately causes weight gain. And typically type two diabetics wanna to try to lose weight. And so this is why I'm saying there's a lot of better options of different types of medications to help manage their diabetes that don't cause weight gain. But if you are taking this medication, weight gain is a common side effect. Fourth key point is you wanna avoid these class of medications if you have an allergy to sulfa. And you should always talk to your doctor or your pharmacist whether you have any allergies to medications. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video and learned something new. If you guys did, please give me a big thumbs up and make sure to comment any questions or feedback you guys have for me. Until then, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.